this connector is a floppy connector. Hey everybody. Here's what happens when you have Windows Vista Movie Maker running in Windows 7 for an extended amount of time after doing quite a bit of editing. The process more or less vomits all over itself. It gets unresponsive and you notice all the green stuff on the playlist thingy here. It's unresponsive. And notice it even plays with other windows within Windows 7. Now is that weird or what? Everything just acts up. So, I want you to do is go into Windows Task Manager and you have to end the process. Which is capital letters moviemk.exe. Go ahead and end the process. And then relaunch Movie Maker. And of course, what you have to do is make sure that you save your project very frequently. And another thing to do, if you install Windows Movie Maker into Windows 7, which I have videos on how to do so, click on Tools and go to Options. And have this check to save auto recovery info every minute. As so long as it'll go, one minute. This reduces your chances of losing everything you have done in a project on the movie. But don't rely on this to save every time because there have been some times where I have lost everything when I was working in the process of making a video. But anyways, before you guys comment, just keep this in mind. Before you say, why don't you just use Windows Live Movie Maker? Well, the thing about Live Movie Maker is it's very limited. It took out a lot of advanced features that were available in the Vista Movie Maker. Let's go ahead and pull up Windows Live Movie Maker, shall we? Have a look here at this. I mean, I mean, it's great that they decide to have the ribbon design, you know, like Microsoft Office has. I mean, this is pretty decent, but look how basic all this stuff is. I mean, the visual effects, I mean, they have some nice visual effects when you add in a video. And you're very limited on your animations and your effects and stuff. And when you go to fade in on a video, it only fades in the video, but not the sound. I mean, it's just too basic. I mean, it's it's for an average Joe who's never, who's, um, I guess I could say he has just now started messing with videos or he's wanting to put a picture slideshow together. That's about as good as this is for. Now for those who watch my Bike Geek MTDX channel, you might notice that I do use Live Movie Maker to put some of the stuff together. I mean, it's quick and easy. I do my time lapses with it. And some of my weather videos, I might actually post stuff together with it, with this. And in some cases, if I have any videos about my road bikes and stuff, I'll post stuff together using the Live Movie Maker. But when it comes to Cube Computer Channel, this is all I use. I mean, you can edit this to work for you more or less. You can do a lot of stuff with this. For one good example would be my logo that stays in the corner of most of my videos. You can't do that with Live Movie Maker. Go ahead and try. If you can, just let me know. But still, I doubt it can happen. I mean, this can be a little annoying at some at sometimes, but this is more advanced. You click this, you get your audio. You can piece over your audio you can do all sorts of stuff with this I mean <clears throat> if I, I mean if anybody was to ask me what was one good feature in Windows Vista it would be the new and improved Windows Movie Maker building on the XP Movie Maker it really but it just really blows my mind that they not that it didn't carry this over into Windows 7 they decided to go to the Windows Live stuff 
And as long as this will work, I'll continue to use it, even if it works in Windows 8. Anyways, that's the only big problem with the Vista Moonmaker is the process tends to get a little iffy after using it for a while. But other than that, it's so much better than Windows Live Moonmaker. By a long shot. Anyways, any questions or comments? Let me know.